Welcome in, friends, to the Quarantine Files, brought to you by the Good Brothers here on Mercado Airwaves. I'm your host, Mike Mercado, with the one, the only, the good brother himself, the strong righty, the good brother himself, Alex Mercado. How are you doing? I'm good, good brother. And on this episode of the Quarantine Files, you came up with something very interesting for the summertime. Normally, this time of year, we are getting ready for the dog days in Major League Baseball. So you came up with the idea for? We are going to do our top five baseball films and i want to emphasize the word baseball because me and mike are in a heavy debate later of what qualifies as a baseball film and what qualifies as not a baseball film i guess very interesting seems how we just did an entire boxing list of rocky whether or not that's a real boxing movie or if it's a love story either way it's this a, is gonna it's, be fun it's a boxing yeah movie. well we'll see or it's a, a oh, love story with boxing part, in the background well, rocky or the whole series well, we just talked about yeah. rocky won can be considered a love story. All the rest are boxing movies. Check out our Rocky list that we just did on the Quarantine Files. But good, brother. You ready to rock and roll and make our picks for the favorite movies on the diamond? Let's get to it. I will start off with my number five film in the baseball world, and that is the classic itself, The Sandlot. I love The Sandlot. I think it's one of the most entertaining kid movies that you could watch it has you know the greatest names on the greatest quotes it also has the spirit that is playing with your friends in the middle of summer all the different sports how each kid kind of follows his own little group and it, it to me is just a pure joy movie we don't even have to do all the quotes like we've heard all the quotes we've all quoted it a thousand times on, but, give me one uh okay which one do you want uh you throw like a Girl, now, see, I like my personal favorite is I don't know some girl named Baby Ruth. Some babe, Ruth. babe Ruth. I triple dog dare yeah, you. See, you like all the you like all the classic ones. Yeah. I like the little subtle ones in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's such a great movie in my opinion. I just, I, I, it's just pure joy. It's a lot of fun. It's kind of what makes baseball so great. Is that it's a kids' game, and deep down in all sports of that, it's all we're all kids at heart when we play. I agree with every single thing you said. It doesn't make my list because remove that last baseball snip you had in there and leave it at all sports. I think this is a coming of age movie. I think baseball's in the background more than most of it. I think beside the first game and the game against the kids that we only see them batting, we don't get necessarily baseball vibes. I think it's more of young friends. Like you can insert throwing a football around and I think you get the same story. But I do love that movie. It's one of my favorite coming-of-age movies. But it didn't make my baseball list. So that is why you won't see it on my list. Yeah, very interesting. But I, I love uh, Sam Lau. What did you I have at number Sam. five? Uh, I had a very personal one to me. It doesn't make a lot of lists. It, it kind of flies under as one of those baseball movies. I picked For the Love of the Game. It, you know, Kevin Costner. He's this aging pitcher at the end of his career. And they're basically telling him, like, this is your last game for us. We're probably going to end up trading you. Like, this is the end. You're about to make the rounds. And he throws a perfect game. And he tells his life story throughout the whole thing. And obviously, you know, with the end, it get, I cry every time at the end where the manager's holding the ball or the owner. And he throws that last strike. And it just says, tell him I quit for the love of the game. Just this old warrior of an athlete accepting that I'm done. My best is behind me. I'm going to walk away with some pride and heart. And be done with it. And the fact that we have the injury angle to it. The fact that it's so in Yankee Stadium I against the I love how Yankees. he's talking to himself. He's yeah. like, no, I don't got that. It's like, stop calling that, man. I don't yeah. got the heat anymore. Yeah. And they bring up the rookie. And he's yeah. like, oh, that's a good move. Like, yeah. yeah, they got this kid in that's never seen. Like, it's so good. It's so subtle. Great movie. Yes. It's a great baseball movie yeah. because it's so much baseball. And I love the story they're telling of him, his life. Like, being a young up-and-comer baseball prospect and an all-star and one of the top players to, like, the end of his career where it's kind of just way it is where it is. We get a young John C. Riley, a catcher. That's fun. Yeah, it's a great movie. I, I, very good call on your behalf. At number four, good brother, I have Rookie of the Year, one of my favorite ones. Obviously, as Cub fans, there's nothing better than seeing Wrigley Field. There's nothing better than seeing that team on the big screen. And for the time, it was the closest we ever came to seeing the team win a World Series. It's another movie that I quote all the time, you know, from uh, Throw It, the ending where he floats it, float it. And his mom ended up being the great pitcher. It wasn't his dad. Like, there, there's something awesome about it. I love the sound effects that his arm makes when it comes back and he throws it. The scene where he has to throw the home run ball back and everybody looks, uh, and Gary Busey. So, like, yeah. I love Rookie of the Year. Uh, it also is my number four. And I think the reason it goes lower on my list, I think there were years ago where we would put it number one. But once the Cubs won a World Series, yeah, it, we didn't have to live through yeah, that as much. But yeah. it is very fun. It's very goofy. It's very silly. It's a very heartfelt. 
I love the ending with the cheese, the yeah, stinky the cheese. Throw the stinky cheese. And I love it. So that's why it still makes my top Harry five. Rolling but I'll say yeah. this. There are years where I thought that would have been the number one. But the Cubs winning one in real life really bumps it down. Pitcher's got a big... But yeah. Throw yeah. it higher. I bet you you won't. Uh, it's a great movie. I love Rookie of the Year. So that's our number four film. Very fun one. This one, we're starting to get on a different level, good brother. At number three, I have a league of our own. We Same thing. What can you say about this classic movie? Top to bottom, one of the best casting in a sports movie. There's no crying in baseball. Yeah, like it, it's on. funny. Like I hate to say it in a woman's in like a woman dominant cast where Tom Hanks. I don't say he steals the show, but he fits in so nice. Like, oh, he's no one it, steals yeah. the show because I think Rosie has her scenes and Madonna has her scenes, and they all have their scenes. Obviously, as a male, you're living the movie through Tom Hanks' character, and I think he does such a good job. And there's such a vulnerability to him. Of him falling for this woman, but him being respect, him falling for in love Gina with Davis her is amazing. Yeah. yeah, like him falling in love with Gina Davis just to be. He loves her so much that he will not disrespect her or her marriage like that. Yeah. And that's like serious character growth in a sports movie comedy. And I love that about it though. And you're gonna notice on these lists where that's what we love. Like just because it's a comedy, just because sports film. The character growth is amazing. And the, yeah, the chemistry, it's all important. I mean, Gina Davis, Tom Hanks, Madonna, Lori Petty, Rosie O'Donnell, Megan Kavanaugh, uh, Tracy Reiner. Like, it is such a strong cast from people that are still working in Hollywood today. This is like, this was the Avengers of baseball movies for its time. In fact, that Wrigley Field plays a part in it because a lot of the women's baseball teams played at good old Wrigley Field on the north side of Chicago. Mm -hmm. So, and down to the core of the movie. It's also about the love of baseball. Yep. It's about the love of the sport. And then you talk about the social commentary, about how we look at women athletics, which to this day, to this day, we don't respect women athletics like we should. But a league of their own made it cool for us to root for these sports, that women can be superstars in sports. And Gina Davis is one of the greatest lead ladies mm -hmm. in Hollywood. And she is so strong as a performer that she might be better than Tom Hanks. And Tom Hanks might be the greatest actor they of all time. They have great chemistry, like a great friendship almost chemistry. Uh, Paul Giamatti doesn't get – Great call. He almost steals the movie yeah. because he's like talks tough, acts tough. But like at the end of the day, like he's the reason that they all started. So I love his character. And it's a good way to start is like, well, this man is a pig, but like he's also like – he's also trying to help these ladies. Favorite Gina Davis movie out of these three? League of Their Own, The Fly, Beetlejuice. League of Their Own. Okay. Yeah, League of Their Own. Okay. At number two, good brother, I have one that made it cool to give Jonah Hill Oscar nominations. I am talking about Moneyball, a great book, an even better movie. The Billy Bean story, the Oakland Athletic story, what led to eventually the Boston Red Sox winning the World Series. This was a story as a true fan of the sport. To see them talk about sabermetrics and what ended up becoming in the sport, because now everybody does it. We got Chris, baby Chris Pratt in that movie. But right when he was getting in shape, when they're when they're asking him, be like, tell him it's not hard to play first base. It's extremely hard to play first base. I love that you're a good egg. Or when he uh, throws the baseball at him and he didn't see it coming, he's like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Like, I love the chemistry between Brad Pitt and Jonah Hill. I love the scene where Brad Pitt comes into the dugout and he throws the chairs because you have uh, Jeremy Giambi dancing around with his pants off. I love a lot of the characters because if you're a baseball fan, a lot of these guys ring true like ron washington is somebody that you hear david justice is a name you hear uh scott haddenberg which was played by chris pratt let's not forget robin wright is in this movie uh philip seymour hoffman is in this movie mm -hmm. i love the scenes where they're in the front office talking about how we're gonna draft these players how we're gonna scout yeah. these players like that's very real and also what makes it so timely is this idea of the old way of thinking of things isn't always the correct way of thinking of things and how they, they modified base and how you have to adapt and how you have to have faith in these new movements. Mm -hmm. And also Jonah Hill, I'm not, I don't like Jonah Hill personally. I, he rubs me the wrong way. Jonah Hill in that movie seems vulnerable, seems likable. It's early career yes. Jonah Hill before he becomes a Martin Scorsese standout and Oscar. Like this movie kind of turned it Jonah makes Hill. It made him. But like this was definitely like fresh off of like these younger, more vulnerable performances. I agree with you. That's why it's my number two too. It's the best film on the list. I think as a as a film, you know, Kondusua. 
Yes. It is the best film on Gave the list. Brad Pitt an Oscar nomination. And Jonah Hill a best yes. supporting up. Like, so I love the way, and I think it does the best job of all these movies where not only is it a fantastic film, but it involves a ton of baseball. And I think that's where Sandlot veers off for me. It doesn't make my list where it's my favorite coming of age film. I want more baseball compared to this one where, no, this is an Oscar winning film. It has a ton of baseball and a ton of insider baseball. Like the random, why do we got to pay for soda in our clubhouse? Like just little snippets like that. And like him being an ex player and him being able to talk to them as an ex player. How great of an ex player he was. And Jonah Hill not knowing anything about it, but more mathematically about it and them learning to accept it. And you know, the, there's only one reason it doesn't make number one. And that's because I think there's one standalone baseball movie that ends all baseball this reminds me a lot of draft day which i think is another kevin cosner movie so underrated as a football film yes it's, it about, is. it's so day underrated is, yes. i love that movie. not my favorite but it's definitely underrated. very underrated yes, like yes. completely and it reminds me of that where it's like it's very behind the scenes of it but it's a fun behind the scenes look of like that's how they talk to each other that's kind of cool and then you know obviously Brad Pitt, who could always just play the pretty boy, allows himself to be vulnerable with this mm-hmm. with his daughter. Oh, I love his and daughter. And him going to Boston. The game. With yes, the, like, it, it's yeah. great. It, it's a great movie. It's a great movie. It's a great story. Yes. Like, I love reading about, about that that team and that genre of baseball. Like, the some win of my streak. favorite, yeah, like, some of my favorite books and, like, documentaries are from that time of baseball. And what That's I loved about it is that time period is when I was playing baseball. So I remember that Oakland Athletics team being such a big yeah, moment Oakland in was sports. a big deal. Yeah. Especially for our high school because we and, look yeah, just like and Oakland. being the A's of all things, you're like, yeah, like you wouldn't expect them to be such big. Like they were hot. You yeah. know, it was fun to watch them. Good, brother. We get to our number one film. But before we get to that, I want to do some honorable mentions because we have the same number one. Mm-hmm. And this is where we I We end up you. having the yeah. same top four. We just twitched off at number five. Interesting. So you want to hear some of my honorable mentions? And I told you some of them might upset you because you didn't think of them. Six. So hold on. So before you do that, yeah. so Sam, I was not able to mention, and then what was the one with the Twins player that we talked oh, about? Oh, uh, Little Big League. Okay, so those are the only two that we've talked about that are my honorable mentions, and I, I'm not a big Field of Dreams fan or the Rookie fan. I think they're fine, but there's a lot of baseball movies. Okay, so now let me hear, and Angels in the Outfield, so let me hear where you're going to stump me on. 61, the story about Roger Maris. It's with uh, Punisher and with yeah, the Death and Yeah. With no. Pe- uh, Pepper. Hardball. I love it when you come ah, big. You got me. Yeah. Okay. That like the hardball, fact that I didn't yeah. even think about hardball. Yeah. Okay. Like, I'll a, give you one. A Keanu Reeves film. I love in one. Chicago. Good amount of baseball. A lot of baseball, mm-hmm. and this is something that it, if you play baseball in this city, that was all right. Yeah. That is what yep. it looks like in Caprini Green. That's what it looks like in Hood Baseball. That's yep. what it looks like in uh, Humble well, Park. Just got themselves a boy from there. So yeah. it is a it is an interesting movie. It's yeah, a, didn't we just get that young up and comer that who's from that Chicago? Play? He's yeah, around man, here. So like, uh, yeah. that's I, yeah, that's a good one. Okay, good job. Yeah, some Can of my other ones. Again? Yeah, we're sixty one. Little Big League, The Natural, Field of Dreams. A lot of great mm-hmm. baseball movies. Field of Dreams is, I think, a little overrated. But the moment with Kevin Costner and Ray Liotta, you obviously have Mufasa himself in there. Yeah, Gendril no, it's Jones. fine. I think it's one the of the White Sox. Obviously, like we're yeah, Cubs fans, the White it's Sox. It's one connection. of those time movies where I'm like, if you caught it at the right time, you love it, and if you didn't, you're probably just very indifferent about it. I don't think it's a bad movie, but I think our number one is the ultimate baseball movie. Like I truly, like I don't think you can argue that this movie is the greatest, not only one of the best sports movies of all time. But it's probably not only one of the best sports movies, not one of the only best comedies of all time, but it's the best baseball movie of and all time. I have three easy ones. Uh, Fever Pitch, I actually thought was really cute. Fever Pitch is fun. It's a really fun movie. And Weird, different use of baseball on that one. But the I reason I bring it up is it corresponded with the Red Sox winning their first World Series. Yeah, so, yeah. like, that one has a special. No, you know me. I love a good rom com. The original Bad News Bears. I like the, I like the, the, the remake, of like course, you would. Too. And 42. 42, 42 is a good, good one with Jackie Robinson. Not great. It could have been great, but it was good. And the fact that it was our guy in it as one of his first major roles before he got a chance to be um, Black Panther really is, you know, Chadwick Boseman's yeah. big moment. Yeah, you know. exactly. You can see that it's there. It's not there yet, but it's definitely it, there. Mm-hmm. You ready to go to our number one, Good Brother? It's obvious. It's one of the best movies of all time, one of the best sports movies of all time, most quoted movie of all time. Good Brother, what's our number one? It is Major League 
one. And I yeah. now that we said that, honorable mention, I do like Major League Two. I, think I love Major silly. League Two. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. it's very. It's like um, Blazing Saddles, whatever. Two. Okay. I think, or some of these other sequels that get really. I think Back to the Future Two. I'll compare it to where it may get a little goofy, but I think it keeps enough of the heart, and it's not as good as one. No. But it's still very enjoyable, and it's just a little flashier. But yes, Mike, we picked Major League. Give him the heat, Ricky. I mean, you got Ricky Vaughn as, you know, obviously Charlie Sheen. Um, Tom Berenger as Jake Dream Taylor. Dreamboat Tom Berenger. Yeah, like, this yeah, is when he's yeah. at his dreamiest. Uh, obviously, uh, Dennis uh, Haysbert mm-hmm. from Allstate as Young Pedro Serrano himself. Bob Euchre does the announcing. Rene Russo is in part her, two. No, it's her first. This is her first role. Does she yeah. show up in part one? Yeah, she's the, okay. she's the librarian in part one. She's, uh, obviously, uh, I love the owner's wife. Yeah. She's amazing Wesley in it. Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes, and shout out to Omar Epps in Major League Two. Yeah. Not as good as obviously Wesley Snipes, but Wesley Snipes, Willie Mays Hayes yeah, is one of the greatest the character characters well. um, that, that you have. I like Chelsea Ross as Eddie Harris in this movie where he's talking about sometimes I pick my nose, you put a little hot yeah, sauce in yeah. there, like he's really funny. Obviously, um, Wesley Snipes is well, amazing. Well, they've actually in it. said with him, they said that when the baseball players watch it, they said he's the most realistic. That one scene is the most real baseball that they've ever seen on camera. They said most baseball teams and players and professionals say this is the most realistic. They say that scene specifically is so real yeah, and it's scary. Best. And apparently he did a lot of studying for that scene too. So it's maybe get those the moments of the earwax and I put Vaseline here and I put this here and talcum powder there. Lou Brown, one of the greatest fictional coaches of all time. He's my, I wish yeah. he was my coach because he's so good. He's so heartfelt in the movie and like how he really treats these players. I love like, you know, we got two or three all-stars I love what he, We're a contender. I love what he does with Roger Dorn when he takes the contract and he pisses on it. When yeah, he, uh, because he I, don't, I don't take any ball. I don't got to do any extra calisthenics. Yes, it's so good. Uh, I love Major League. I think Major League is a funny movie. Movie. It's a good baseball movie. It has all the ups and downs from uh, Ricky Vaughn's great sleeping underdog with, story. Right, you have a good Rick, love story. You have, uh, Ricky Vaughn sleeping with a teammate's wife because the wife sees the teammates uh, sees Roger Dorn cheating on him, and then he punches him after they win the pennant. Yeah. I love that uh, the White Sox are a bad guy in in, yeah. <laughs> in part two. It's just a fun movie. I, I like. We can gush over all the time, and the music is great on it. I love the music, and I think beside it being fun, like, yeah, it's hilarious. There's a lot of heart in there. There's a lot of good moments that you're like, you know, it's an underdog story. It's this uh, it's this old, you know, vet that, like, was in the prime of his years, and his knees are gone as a catcher, and this young pitcher never given a chance, and these all these nobodies set up for failure, but just enough energy and charisma, and they make it work, and I, you know me, I love a good love story. I love the redemption arc of him laying the bunt down at the end, being unselfish, him becoming the manager in the next one. Like, I love that kind of stuff. And I, the music in it's so That's good. So great. You know, it's made for the film specifically. So it, it always, that always works out better because it adds in so much more. I mean, some of the quotes though, fuck you, Jobu. I do it myself. This guy threw it at his own kid in a oh, father son game. I love this one. Uh, you don't think Jesus Christ can hit a curveball? <laughs> you don't think Jesus Christ can hit a curveball? It's a great. <laughs> Great it's just a bit outside. Uh, there's just so Paul many. Paul four, Paul eight. Uh, where Paul did you? 12. Where did you play? Uh, uh, summer ball, the California Penitentiary System. Yep. <laughs> like it's so good. I love. I-, I love that movie and Peak Charlie Sheen. Mm-hmm. Right, and then after that, I think uh, comes Wall Street. Yeah, I think Wall Street and and Major League were right around each yeah, other. Yeah, because so. he had just done Platoon. Okay, so yeah, that a makes sense. Them. They had so a lot yeah, of this was peak. Cast. This yeah. was really peak. Charlie, and they Sheen. had convinced each other because they're like, "Well, this would be more fun than what we just did. Like less serious. Like let's do it." So what did what do you think it is uh, uh, besides you know just the great acting in a lot of these movies that makes baseball such a great sport for film? I think baseball is good, and it kind of fits into the drama with the 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 kid from the Padres that kept hitting in the Texas Junior. I think it goes to that where it's never over. There's yeah. no time limit. Yeah, underdogs like we're Cubs fans. We truly, I think we're made for baseball movies because we love an underdog story. You can always come from behind. You could technically go on a winning streak. Yeah. You can, as long as you make it, you have a chance. Even in the bottom of the ninth, you have a chance. And I think that's that's why it's such an easy story to tell. It's because it's the best underdog version where, you know, there's so many good, talented players out there. I think when you watch a basketball movie, you're like, all right, physically, guys, like, you're short. Like, you don't got the best shooters. This, you can do that. And then you look at football movies, there's so much going on, and – but baseball, it's so pure. It's just so, 
you know, it's a slower paced game and I think it makes for the best type of movies because I would consider baseball probably does have the best library of movies overall consistency wise with football and basketball close behind it. I would say boxing might be the best. Boxing seems to have. I think baseball is the best. It's interesting. I think boxing is argue- boxing's up there. I think there's a lot of trash boxing movies out there. There's a lot of trash baseball movies. There is, but I think if you look at it, so count Rocky as one. Yeah. Beside Rocky, I was like, I can name Ali, the fighter. Yeah, yeah. Cinderella okay. Man, okay. The Natural, Raging Bull. Like, we're already going through a yeah. bunch. Like, we've already we, got to six. We named six of the best ones ever. And they're so, those are and considered some of the greatest. Yeah, movie. but I the think baseball almost doubles that. <laughs> like it was- and a lot of these movies play off of more of their dramatic about the fighter biopic slash than actual boxing film, too. But that's the story, though. It's like this Mike Tyson film with uh, with Jamie Foxx is going to be amazing. Yeah. Like these, it, it lends itself into being great, much more of a dramatic than I think any of the other sports. I guess it's different to me. Because you have to persevere physically. And it's also not a team sport, too. And that changes our list a little bit. No, I, well, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this baseball movie is more you about can the make chemistry more per- of a cast. It's not easier to make a personal movie about a fighter than it is, than it is an entire baseball and, team where you unless, gotta make five stories unless you're doing a love a love for the game or the natural where yeah. it is a specific guy and those movies don't do as hot as the other ones so it's very different I think. what do you think about the rookie rookie's fine yeah with, I think rookie's uh, with good. Wade. It's, yeah, it's, it's good it's fun it's a, it's it's definitely nice. a beer it's, it's a nice beer nice. tier baseball movie but i know i, I do enjoy it i do enjoy it like that one's definitely our dad one of our dad's yeah. favorites yeah he loves a good Dennis Quaid baseball yeah, movie with yeah. no man pitching. Like he definitely likes that. Shout out to Randy Quaid though in Major League Two, one of the oh, best. Yeah. I like said, tear it down, make it into a parking we lot. We love Major League Two here. I, it's the right amount of goofy yeah. that I live for. Good brother, let's run this bad boy down. At number five, I have Sandlot. You have for the love of the game. At number four, we both have Rookie of the Year. At three, League of Our Own. At number two, Moneyball. And at number one, Good Brother, what do we have? Is our best. Baseball movie of all time. It is Major League One. You damn right it you is. Better not cut me. <laughs> it's such a. Am I already cut? <laughs> yeah, the the pin when he. Uh, am I already cut? Oh, I love Willie Mays. Damn it, Wesley Snipes. Why did you have to screw the government? And they had to put you to jail. We deserve more from you. I love this list, good brother. I've loved the list that we've had from the Hot Take episode to the Rocky franchise to now the best baseball movies of all time. I know a lot of people are trying to do the right thing and then watch a little baseball on the side. So hopefully while everything is going on in this world, you can have a little fun with us, reminisce, and go through some nostalgia in some of these movies. And maybe you can even binge watch some of these and introduce them to other people because that's the great thing about movies is when you're able to show them to different people, to different generations, and appreciations for this movie keep going yeah good brother thank you so much for coming up with this list make sure you're following him on twitter at mercado 21 alex i'm at mike m media the show is at good brothers pod give us a like rate review and share us wherever you get your favorite podcast at mercado airwaves we have swag at teespring.com slash mercado airwaves when in doubt mark it out check out the swag we have a shirt just from the good brother himself it's actually pretty pretty nice and of course you can become a producer of the show at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. For the good brother himself, Alex Mercado. Adios. I'm the good brother, Mike Mercado. We will see you next time here on The Quarantine Files, brought to you by the good brothers on the Mercado Airwaves Network.